So for today's Elden Ring challenge run, I've decided to download a mod made by the wonderful Guard Device team that turns every single entity in Elden Ring invisible. All of the enemies, invisible. All of the bosses, invisible. Even Melina and the horse are invisible. But of course, simply making the enemies invisible isn't hard enough. That's just a simple, easy challenge run. So on top of that, I've chosen to also permanently disable the HUD throughout the run. This means I can't see my health, my FP, my stamina, my quick item, my flash count, my death. These two mods combined made for quite the difficult and annoying run, but it did feel really awesome when I finally beat each boss. So without further ado, I present to you Elden Ring, but every boss is invisible and the HUD is disabled. Enjoy! Ah, the beautiful land of Limgrave. Look at how awesome it is. It's good to be back. Alright, so if the intro was not very clear, today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a run of the game of Elden Ring except all the enemies are invisible, as I'm sure you can, or rather can't see, from the lack of tree sentinel up ahead. So I'm gonna just head down here and hope for the best. Oh, that's interesting. So it seems like the uh, torches of the enemies that carry torches are still visible, but the rest of them aren't, which doesn't really make a difference for the bosses, because the only torch-bearing boss I can think of is the tree sentinel outside of Landell. Who I most definitely will not be fighting, so you know it doesn't really make a difference. But um, yeah, that's that's cool, I guess. All right, time to get my horse and leveling, which would be fantastic. So definitely do with a uh, better method of transportation. So let's get Melina unlocked. Wait, what? Wait, wait a minute. Wait, why is she? Wait a minute. <laughs> why is she invisible? But you're not an enemy. Traveler from beyond the fog. W what? Melina. My imaginary friend has just gotten substantially more imaginary. Have you heard of the Finger Maidens? I mean, it seems like hearing is kind of all I can do right now. Uh, yeah, I accept. Me and the cloak are going on a journey. The cloak has given me a horse. All right, let's get the horse active here, and let's just head over to Stormvale, I guess. <laughs> oh boy. Looks like my horse is about invisible as Bella, no less. This is awesome. So I'm just gonna be riding nothing. This is completely normal playthrough of Elden Ring. There's nothing different whatsoever. It's just completely, this is, this is vanilla, unmodded. All right, and looks like it's now time to face off against the first boss. Margit the Fell Omen. Foul tarnished. In search of the Elden Ring. Are you invisible in the cutscene also? In yes. By the flame of that is a beautiful view of the wall of Stormfell Castle. Interesting. Is there an earthquake or something? Yeah, guys, I think there's like an earthquake or something like that. I don't know what could possibly be causing all this smoke storm. Stop giving me a nice panoramic view of the arch. Let it be Margaret the Fell. Oh god, not Margaret the Fell. There's nothing here. Oh, there's a dagger. I don't know what that was. Okay, he's moving. Alright, I'm gonna hit him with a uh, an unsheath. I said I'm gonna okay. I don't know how many flasks I have, I should be keeping count. I think I'm out now. Yeah, I'm out. Alright, well, I'm uh, almost certainly dead. Jump! Got him with an unsheath. Well, that went very well. I'm sure I almost got him down to being dead. I, I, uh, that was terrible. Okay. So I'm gonna make the executive decision that the Uji Katana is not going to be able to beat Margit, who I just struggled with anyways. And I'm going to quickly head over to the south of Limgrave and go pick up the Bloodhound's Fang from Bloodhound Knight Darwin. That is, that is a weapon that is actually good, that I am actually good at using. So on my invisible pocket of air here, I'm just gonna slowly navigate over down to the south. And hopefully Darwin will be an easier challenge than Margaret, who I struggle with on a regular basis when I can see him and my flask count. Two thousand years later. All right, I am now approaching the Ever Jail, which is looking substantially purpler than I remember. And 
let us now see how much of a challenge Bloodhound Knight Darvold will be. that air. That's right. Show that air who's boss. I think my stamina is low. Oh, we got him. We got him. Let's go. All right. Bloodhound's thing acquired. I wonder how many flasks I have. I have no flask left. Okay. That was a close encounter with the gripping boss of Bloodhound Knight Darwell. I've got to be at least like halfway through the game after that. All right, let's head back over to the Castleward Tunnel real quick so that I can level up so I can use this beautiful blade. I'm sure this will be fun and there will be nothing bad that happens. Great start. Got him there. Got him again. Beautiful. Oh, second phase. Oh, oh. Get in and then get out. I'm out of blasts. Alright, I think this might be over. Ooh, we got him at least halfway. That's pretty good, though. That's pretty good. Can't complain too much. That was not terrible. But it wasn't as good as it should have been because he's still alive. So let me run that back, like, you know, a couple more times, hopefully. Oh, Morgoth. Or Morgoth, I suppose. Not too well for you now, is it? <laughs> okay, well, now that I've attempted this like 600 times, I'm going to take a break before my mental health becomes equivalent to that of the Lord of Frenzied Flames. So I'm going to quickly just go and find a couple of uh, important items that may uh, make this actually somewhat bearable. So now if these rats would not mind. Hey. Now of course I could also kill the very large and very invisible Grail over there, but I don't think I'm that desperate for runes just yet. But there is one more item that I can pick up real quick. And that would be Millicent's Sacred Tear. Thank you very much, Millicent. Okay, and with all of these items now acquired, I'm going to head back over the castle word tunnel upgrade my flask two times mix half of my wondrous physic can't forget the trusty eradigan source seal to increase all my attributes quite a bit and i will also be spending the money i just obtained not on levels as any sane person would but on something much more important that of course being drip because the samurai armor set looks really really ugly and well the knight's armor set looks quite a bit better in my opinion even if we can only afford like half of it. But with Margaret's defeat, I should be able to buy the second half. So without further ado, let me head back over to the Margaret the Fell Omen Arena and hopefully we will have much more successful results. Five minutes later. Well, this is working wondrously, and I've now come to the sudden conclusion that I can obtain a couple of other items that I think would be quite useful on this journey. And despite just having spent a solid 7,000 runes on this knight armor, which looks very good, in this run I believe that the practicality of your weapons and armor is going to be much more important than the looks of your weapons and armor, which is why I know the location of a certain warrior who has a very, very, very powerful suit of armor. Hopefully he doesn't hit too hard. Oh, he 
go up and bow. Oh, that's Earth. What is that? So slow. Right? That's a cool attack. What a good NPC. I've never actually fought this guy other than when he invades. Rockin' couldn't possibly have more than one class. Yeah. My sincere apologies, Brunel. I really didn't want to do that, but the beast steel armor is really, really good. Oh, and you just get the devour receptor? Well, I'm not gonna be using it because it kinda sucks. But uh what doesn't suck is his armor. Oh god, 2.1 to 4.4. Plus all that poise that won't knock me down. Oh, but I'm gonna be heavy. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, endurance is gonna be the stats I level then, but you know what? As I slowly level up, that's gonna be the armor set I will navigate to. But unfortunately, Bernal isn't the only absolute S tier NPC that is going to be being murdered today. Because the next person on my hit list is someone a lot more uh, pottery like. I would say this is gonna hurt me more than it hurts you, but well, it is very much not going. Ow. This is gonna be a lot harder. This might be its own battle. Especially when that happens. This might be a bit more of a challenge than I first envisioned. Let's see if I can put on any more of it. Well, here we go. Come on, come on, come on. And the bleed proc. How is he not dead? This is all I have. Yes! Oh my god, we finally did it. Oh my god, that was pain and suffering. But we finally did it. That took me so many attempts, but we have finally defeated Mark of the Fell Omen. That was, that was absolute pain and suffering to be sure. But it is finally done and I never have to do it again until I have to do it again in Altus Plateau and stuff. But I'm going to level up firstly Endurance and then Vigor and then a little bit Dexterity. And yeah, that's all. That was super bad. And hopefully now I can wear at least one more piece of the Beast Champion armor. Nope. Still, I can wear that. Slightly better, but still not the best. You know what? Gossok sneak enough that he's basically invisible already. So this isn't exactly anything new. But uh, I will be taking the main gate because I have no time for a, a whole dungeon of invisible banished knights and other various things. But I will say that there is one item I'm very much interested in obtaining, and that would be the golden seed at the end of this run. So that would be the first place I head after I get through. Luckily for me, the crossbow bolts are about as invisible as always. You say, not at all. However, the exiled knights and the lion will be. All right, come on, we're almost there. We're about to breach the castle undetected because there's nobody here. Trolls, exile soldiers—I don't know what you're talking about. That'd be good. All right, unless I run out of stamina now, which I just did, this should be fine. Okay, it's fine. We've done it. We have breached the castle undetected. And I can now upgrade my class once more. And now the question is, can I defeat an invisible god? Very invisible.
Looks like it's just the cloak. Sorry, Godric's not home. Mighty dragon. There is a true born heir. Oh, cloak's coming off to reveal my true enemy. The golden scarf. Playing as a lord. Oh my god, not the golden scarf. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm screwed. I command thee. Oh my god. Just the presence, the voice the of the golden Lord scarf. Of all that is golden. Truly a terrifying figure, but luckily for me, not quite as terrifying as Margaret the Fellow. I think that's a little bit uh, unexpected. Okay, oh, nope. But I'm finished. Bleed. Not stamina. Is that a voice break? No, that's the second thing. Okay. <gasps> it just summoned the hand out of nowhere. It's created a tear in reality. Guys, the hand might be too much. I don't know if I can handle it. No pun intended. Alright, whatever. You don't scare me, Godric. Well, actually, I am a little bit scared. A voice break? Yeah, you stab that air. Show the air who's boss. Alright, stop. Oh my god, I cannot believe I survived that. I'm very dead now. Out of boss, because I just have this one left. No, no, no. Oh. He's gotta be almost dead, right? Well, I assume he was, but I'm slightly more dead. So, I guess we'll never know. All that means is now we get to attempt round number two. A few moments later. Well, it was a good run, to be fair. It was a good, a good Elden run. A run fit for an Elden Lord. I like him. Yes! Oh my god, we did it! Oh my god! Wait! Uh, okay! Okay, we got that poise break and the bleed, I guess that worked. Okay! Okay, that was, uh, that was not nearly as bad as Margaret, I must admit. That was, uh, reasonable. Uh, but, you know what? At the end of the day, Godric is dead, and we can now move on to Lyurnia of the Lakes. Beautiful. Okay, so yeah, Godric wasn't terrible. Uh, he took a couple of attempts to kind of get used to the patterns that I can't see. But uh, it's mostly once you just get the second phase, you get the bleed proc, the poise break, it wasn't too bad. It just kind of took a little bit of piecing together. But all in all, definitely not the greatest challenge in the universe. Uh, however, of course, with Nala and the Red Wolf are up next in this order. So that will probably be a bit of a struggle, but I do know of a way to make it a lot easier. Because you see, Renala has employed a uh, certain giant who is quite good at smithing, and he happens to have a couple of smithing stones for sale. Of course, the giant I am referring to is Eiji, the blacksmith, who is, just like everyone else, invisible. But that will not stop him from selling me four somber smithing stones, which I will now use to upgrade my Bloodhound's Fang to a respectable plus four, which is quite nice. But in addition to that, I do also have a lovely Remembrance of the Grafted down here, which I can use for 20k runes if I'm not be getting the Grafted Dragon or Axe from it. So I can rest up this Site of Grace here, 
And I also can upgrade my flask, the sacred tier from the church. And also level up my endurance because I want as much of that beast champion armor on me as I possibly can. So hopefully this will at least get me like the leggings. Yeah, okay, that's good. Helmet two perhaps? No. Okay, well, you know what? I'll take the legs. And now that we have all that done with, there's only one thing left to do, and that is to go and pick up the Academy Glintstone Key from Smara so we can head into the Academy of Raya Lucaria. Here we are. Academy of Raya Lucaria. I love this place. Sorcerers are annoying enough, but I can see them, and now that I can't, it's going to be even more fun. Although the actual part of them that's annoying are their projectiles, which, as you can see here, are still plenty visible. So let me just dodge past these idiots real quick, and let's head over to the Defender Grace. Conveniently located right here, which is quite nice. And yeah, I got the marionettes here, let me just, uh, Bloodhounds Finesse. Ooh, got all of them. One swing. So now we'll head out to the, uh, courtyard area. That's funny, you can still see the, uh, faces of the little undead zombie dudes, but you can't see the rest of their bodies, that's kind of disturbing, but also kind of funny. Love the marionettes here, but of course the actual bad part here is going to very much be the uh, dreaded dogs. Ooh, okay, quite fun. Just run past him. Let's head uh, right onto the lift here. And now after a quick run through of Rai Lucaria's classroom area, we can head into the fight against the next boss, the invisible Red Wolf of Radigan. Here we go. I'm sure this will be fun. Oh, starting with the Carrion Slicer. Uh oh. Well, okay. No, I see how it is, Red Wolf. We love this fight, love this fight. Alright, let's just pretend like nobody saw that one, and uh, yeah, I don't know what these roots are doing on the ground here. Uh, hmm. Alright, anyways, first attempt for sure, definitely not second one. Alright, going well so far. He's not even that bad, I can still steal with this magic attack. It's just a common case of skill issue, I suppose. Comment, lovely. Oh, hey, we got him. That wasn't even that bad. Second try. That was not actually terrible at all. And with the runes that he gives me, I can now level up my endurance enough that I'll hopefully be able to use higher of the beast champion's armor, which is fantastic news. Still heavy, but I still got runes to spare, so one more endurance should do it, I hope. I'll go through just in case. And boom, oh, medium. We now have the entire Beast Champion set to me with a medium roll. Fantastic. Alright, Ronella's not gonna know what hit her. Now, I believe there's a gold speed in this direction. Despite the Iron Maiden who is uh, barreling down on me, so I would like to get that gold seed because I want as many flasks as possible. And this will probably end up leading to my early grave. Alright, a little bit of Indiana Jones cosplay real quick. The boulder is not invisible, and yet I still ended up getting by it. And despite the ugliness of this armor set, there is one way I know that I can make this armor set at least a little bit better looking. And you know, it might also prove to add a little bit of extra defense, and that of course is heading over the Church of Vows. Walking over to the far right side, where I can obtain the golden sewing and tailor tools. Chop by to invisible Muriel. Pick this grace up in case I accidentally kill an NPC I can't see. And back over to the debate parlor. And now, with my gold sewing needle that I have acquired, I can alter my garments and give my beast champion armor cape, which now makes it look at least a little bit better. Oh, and now I'm heavy again. Oh. You know what? I would expect nothing less. Do you live? Nope. Alright, you know what? I'm actually gonna send this back down, because apparently 
this super heavy, high quality cape is enough to tear my endurance down from its respectable medium to heavy. So hopefully I can just get one more and please be medium again. Beautiful. Okay. See, I knew I would end up needing more endurance. And now that I am armed with the entire Beast Champion set, a plus four Bloodhound Sting, and some substantially upgraded flasks, I am now ready to take on Renala, Queen of the Full Moon, while she is invisible. So let's see what terrible things have happened to her cutscene real quick. Grand Library, just as empty as I remember it. Ah, looks like he tripped. Stumbled over some, uh loose dust or something like that. This is way creepier when they're invisible, jeez. Your tricks don't matter because the uh, golden glow is still visible when the people they glow on are invisible. And this should not be much of a challenge. Oh. So close. But now it is time for phase two, so let's see what happens here. Let's go. She's some moon. Oh boy. Yep, and now the summons are going to be invisible as well. And I'm out of here. Alright, let's punch some of And like the Jeff House and Tom of the Group. Well, what am I supposed to do there? Come on, Renala. If I win this, it's gonna be the most clutch thing you've ever seen in the entire life. Where is an issue? Yo! Oh my god, we did it! Oh wow! I am. How much health? 84. Oh my god. That was actually surprisingly difficult. That was really hard when you can't see her and she just spams a bunch of ridiculously annoying spells that you just can't dodge because you're running from six invisible dogs and stuff like that. I see why they make it so you can actually see her when you fight her because that was not very fun. And she's still invisible. Where did he flee? Screw you, Renala. That sucked, but at least I never have to do it again. And I get an extra 20,000 runes from her remembrance that I can now spend on uh, skill health, one strength, some dexterity, another endurance. Mine wouldn't be that bad either. Maybe an arcane. A couple bits of extra dexterity. I just like generally across the board. Perfect. Alright, screw you, Renala. That was a really annoying fight. That was actually so annoying. It didn't take me that long, but every attempt felt like it took forever. But at least now, I can navigate my way to the Bellum Highway and start making progress towards the land of the Erd Tree, known as Altus Plateau. 
Although, of course, I do not have both halves of the Dectus Medallion. I only have one half of the Dectus Medallion. So I am going to have to make a quick pit stop at Fort Height so that I can pick that up real quick. Which I do not anticipate being that bad. Uh, and I think will actually be quite nice because I can pick up a golden seed right outside of Fort Height, which will add to my flask count. There's a golden seed. Oh yeah, the Palladius here. You know, I think I'm gonna go grab that Grace real quick. Never died in Fort Hype before, but there's a first time for everything, especially when your stamina, health, and uh, the enemies you're fighting are invisible. Let's pick this up real quick. Alright, and Dectus number two is now mine. And now let's head back over to here. Beautiful. Back on the Bellum Highway once more. And we're almost at Altus. And there is one small, well, small, small pit stop I'd like to make real quick. Because there is a sacred tier at the Bellum Church. And I could do with as many of those as humanly possible. So, let's here and grab one there. And now, let's get over to the Dectus. A few moments later. And now that I have the two Dectus pieces, I can hoist Dectus Medallion on the Grand Lift of Dectus and send myself up to the Altus Plateau. All right, and that's where this video is going to end today. Yeah, that's right, leaving you guys on a cliffhanger. But if you do want to see how the series ends, why don't you subscribe so you can see what happens next. I am deciding to split this video into parts because I want to focus on making sure these videos are super high quality and when the videos are 10 hours long, I can't exactly give a lot of attention to every single section of it. So I've decided to split the video into two parts. This will be the first part, the second part will come out when it comes out and that will wrap it up so i hope you guys did enjoy this first part of the invisible elden ring saga and if you're excited to see how it wraps up then be sure to like and subscribe and i will see you guys when it comes out goodbye